also? No, I'm a flexitarian still. I'm, I'm working on moving towards that. Uh, we pretty much don't buy meat for our house. I think for Christmas we did filet mignon. <laughs> uh, we had the grandparents over, so we wanted to feed them some meat. I don't know. But for the most part, uh, we lean towards that. Um, I feel it would be best for me to, as far as I've seen, well, the highest diet is air, the breatharians, but just under that is a fruitarian. And uh, it's actually questionable whether vegetarian or carnivorism is better than the other. Um, vegetables are actually far inferior to fruits. Vegetables grow in the ground and are very full of earthly matter that creates a, a, a clogged up situation in the body. All the grains, cereals, uh, and meat actually doesn't have as much earthly matter, but it starts rotting much quicker inside you. Um, and as Hilton Hotema said, if you take a carnivore and a vegetarian, shoot them both, and let them fall and lay outside in the sunshine and just observe them while they rot for a few days, the carnivore is going to just become so foul so much quicker, whereas the vegetarian will actually lay there for a few days without starting to stink at all. Uh, <laughs> it's a hypothetical thing, but it's the same thing. You can say it doesn't matter much to me. <laughs> if you're dead, I don't care how quick. Right, that, that but it just shows that yeah. the meat meat rots inside us. Uh -huh. It doesn't. It's earthly matter that helps clog us up, and meat doesn't have as much of that, but it, it putrefies real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, fruit, on the other hand, has very little earthly matter in it, and it's mainly just full of uh, a lot of water, and it's distilled water. So there's four sources of distilled water, basically. I'm sure there's more, but. Uh, rainwater and urine and machine made distilled water and yeah. Yeah. machine made rainwater. Oh, all fruit and vegetable juices. Those liquids are distilled. Um, and you would think when you look up in the dictionary, distilled water, it's going to say steam evaporation. But that's only per example. Uh, Distilled water, what it mainly says is water that has come back together bit by bit. And that can happen in a number of ways. Um, the clouds do it, that's through a kind of a, a more gentle evaporation. That's definitely not, you know, 100, 200 degrees on the stove that's boiling it. Um, and so plants do it, that water comes up through the roots and, you know, it's going into the fruit and it's growing in there. It's, it's been through filters through the entire plant and just becomes a new, brand new liquid inside the fruit. Um, and all inorganic matter has been transmuted and turned into organic matter. I just read something on the web uh, you know, just yesterday that uh, this diet expert does not recommend fruit juice Well, that meant they're drinking fruit juice. <laughs> I can kind of see that. I mean, I, all this research has shown me that the more that we go back to what's simple and uncomplicated mm -hmm. are the easiest, are the real answers. Um, to astral project, you just need to close your eyes. To go out the vortex, you just need to close your eyes. To keep yourself healthy and youthful forever, you just need to cycle your own water. And that's the easiest, you know, it's, you got to have electricity to have a distiller. Uh, and the rainwater, it's debatable now whether or not it's distilled water because... It picks up so much out of the sky when it falls. Yeah, and that's it, even when nature, the planet, didn't have chemtrails and all this pollution. The first half of a rainstorm cleans the air, and it's generally the second half that is pure distilled water. But I'm not sure now what even the second half of a rainstorm, what kind of state that water's in. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, I guess the way to prove it would be to boil it down and see what is in it afterwards. That's interesting. We should try that. Let's see where. Yeah, we treat this like a conversation. We'll, like we're all working on getting answers, so we get a lot better. Um, and so that makes more sense to me. You know, the way people normally eat fruit is you pick it off the tree and you eat it. And um, you know, you're talking about getting a masticating juicer, and even at that, it seems most natural to masticate with your mastication tool. Mm -hmm. And then the life force of that thing isn't bursting out into the air while it's in the masticating juicer, it's inside your mouth when it's you're capturing all of it. So that makes more sense. Uh, a lot of people have been so fooled away from fruit, you can't eat too much fruit or fruit juices because of the sugar. Right? But the only reason that that can cause a problem is when your stomach is full of starches. And when all that sugary water lands on starch, the tube can create fermentation. And that's what creates problems inside the body. But if you uh, are just taking in fruits and or you're eating fruit on an empty stomach and not combining it with bread, uh, that sugar actually immediately bursts into the whole system and has excellent effects with you. And it's, I mean, that's what we're designed to do. And um, we are some of the only creatures that have hands. Most creatures can only eat stuff off the ground. We can pick fruits off the tree. So yes, you know, an elephant can, but it's only got its little trunk to try to, you know, can't really peel open an orange, right? But we can do that. And we can, so fruits, and it seems like nuts and seeds, which we can crack open, uh, seem to be the highest diet, I uh, think actually just fruit alone, aside from breath areas. Um, I think why this is important, I believe this is the key to making this change. This is this simple piece of knowledge of what pure water does to the body is the key to starting to reverse all this horror that we've been under. And it's the direct battle, tool, weapon that we need against the vibrational war. <clears throat> the main target of fluoride, and it's called Fluoride the Aging Factor, it's an excellent book, is the pineal gland. Uh, otherwise known as your third eye. This is a book called The Surgery of the Pineal Organ. Most people think the third eye is a metaphysical, poetic description of the pineal gland. It's first and foremost an anatomical description. We all have three eyeballs. And if you look up the physical structure of the pineal gland, it's round, it's hollow, and it has rods and cones in it, just like these eyes, for color reception. And you know how they say that these eyes pick up a very small percentage of the available light spectrum, like 0.005%? This eye sees the other part. I don't know if it sees the whole rest of the light spectrum. It at least sees much more of the spectrum. And when you sense somebody behind you, which is a common theme just here all the time throughout life, and everybody just say, oh, I just sense somebody behind me. It must be coincidence. It's not coincidence at all. Your third eye sees in a spherical 360 degree direction at all times. And when you sense somebody behind you, your third eye saw them. And the third eye is how people who can see auras through their lifestyle, their diet, their, their pineal gland is not shut down, and they're able to see that different light of the spectrum that these eyeballs can't pick up. It's not that these eyes are there to see it, it's that their third eye is seeing it. 